pharmaceutical aids and necessities. Shown is the learning objectives for this lecture. What are pharmaceutical aids and necessities? They are usually used in manufacturing of pharmaceuticals or drugs. Therefore, they should have little or no therapeutic value. These pharmaceutical aids and necessities are essential in making drugs into their dosage forms. So therefore, even though it is not the active ingredient, however, it goes into the products to be used and consumed by patients. Therefore, these pharmaceutical aids and necessities must comply to some sort of quality and purity. So there are 15 pharmaceutical aids and necessities and we will look into each one of them briefly. So the first one is acidifiers and alkanizer. So these substances are used to alter the pH of a product or to manually maintain the pH of the product. Therefore, they cannot cause any harmful effects on the body. There are 10 types of these substances and 6 are acidifiers and the rest is the alkalizing agents. So we are going to look at one monograph from each category. The first one is sulfuric acid which is an acidifier. The monograph is attached. And the second one is a monograph for sodium hydroxide which is an alkalizing agent. Second is buffers. Buffers are solution consisting of a mix of the acid and one of its salt and it is used to maintain the pH of a certain solution. When the pH is maintained, it can help to make the drug more stable and last longer. The buffers can be prepared by dissolving any of these substances in a definite amount of water. This is how all the buffers are prepared and the range of where the pH will be maintained for each buffer. Third is adsorbents and absorbents. An adsorbent will be able to make substances stick onto the surface. Absorbents, on the other hand, would absorb the substance into itself. So there are no chemical reactions involved during adsorbents and absorbents. This animation is to help you understand the difference between adsorption and absorption. The types of adsorbents and absorbents are as follows and we are going to look into soda lime which is an absorbent. This is the monograph and an absorbent aluminium sulfate. Next is antioxidant and preservatives. Almost all pharmaceutical products have substances that can be easily oxidized by our atmosphere. So to prevent oxidation, you need antioxidants. So antioxidants can act by two different mechanisms. The first is the antioxidant is a reducing agent and the second is the antioxidant will reduce or reverse the normal oxidation in the product. So when antioxidants are reducing agents, they themselves will be oxidized, that is why they are reducing agents. 
they themselves and their reduction products should not be toxic and it should be a slow process and they should be oxidized before the drugs is oxidized. So the selection between which action that you want to use depends on the following where the chances of redox reaction taking place is higher or which one is effective in low concentration and is it physiologically and chemically compatible with the drug or is it inert and also does it cause any toxicity and some antioxidants can also act as an antimicrobial and also as preservatives so these are the examples of antioxidants and we will discuss in class two types of antioxidants which is sodium bisulfide and hypophosphorus acids. This is the monograph attached. On the other hand, this is the list of common preservatives used in drug substances. Fifth is desiccants. Desiccants absorbs moisture from the drugs and also from the atmosphere. Some desiccants, when absorbed in moisture, will turn into liquid, for example, calcium chloride, but some retain its rigid crystal form, which is like silica gel. So they are not put into your drug, but they will help your drug to stay stable in their bottles. The sixth is excipients. So as you know, excipients is to increase the bulk of the formulation. They are also considered as diluents. They should not exert any therapeutic action. Generally, they have to be inert. Lubricants, fillers, binding agents, and so on can also be considered as excipients. Because excipients also enter the body, therefore, some quality and purity must be established. So these are the six common excipients used. And there is a short and simple monograph of these two excipients to be discussed. Next is suspending and emulsifying agents. So they are also called thickening agents, emulsifying agents, or even stabilizing agents. So we will first look at emulsifying agents. Emulsifying agents is used to mix two immiscible liquid. So as you can see, this is oil and water. And we add an emulsifying agent in order for these two liquid to mix. So we will mix the emulsifying agent and as you can see now the two mixtures are mixed together. So with the emulsifying agents both liquid can stay in a homogenized phase. Next is the suspending agent suspending agent on the other hand is to mix a substance or a powdered substance that are not immiscible in any solution therefore adding a suspending agent this powder can now mix in the solution and stay stabilized in that form So suspending agents and emulsifying agents are used in numerous formulations and these are the examples of these agents. And a simple monograph. Next is filter aids. They are inorganic substances which is used to purify or to filter unwanted particles. But while you are using the filter aid, you might also filter out your substances. So you must make sure that 
you take good care when using filter aids. There are two examples of filter aids as such. And the next is colorants, where you can use it for tinting and opacity agents. Tinting is what makes this capsule has a yellow and a red color. If you want the red color, you can heat up ferric oxide. If you want the yellow color, you can heat up ferrous hydroxide. Opacity agents, for example titanium oxide, is responsible for that reflective feature of the capsule and is also can be used as whitening agent. This is to protect the product from UV rays. Next is tonicity adjusting agents. This agent is to make sure that the tonicity of the drug is suitable for the administration. So tonicity is actually a measure of the osmotic gradient. So this is to make sure that the drug can be absorbed or transported via osmosis. Next is solvent and vehicle. So this is the most important substance which is used in most liquid dosage forms, which is water. So it has a category on its own, water. So this is the monograph of purified water. There's a lot of purity tests that needs to be done on purified water as follows. The next one is colouring, flavouring and sweeteners. So the colouring agents is different from the colourants previously and there are many compounds that can be used as flavouring agents. Next is ointment and suppository bases. We will look at ointment first. In semi-solid preparations, where it is applied topically, it should soften the surface but it should not melt when applied to skin. The bases used for this ointment should be inert and they should have these various characteristics. The common type of ointment bases are as follows. And suppository are medical preparation inserted through the rectum where they should melt, dissolve and disperse and also exert a local or a systemic effect. Suppository bases should have these following criteria, and these are the examples of suppository bases. Next are diluent binders, disintegrating agents, and lubricants. Diluents is to increase bulk of the pharmaceutical product. Binders is to cause cohesive properties in the product. Disintegrating agents is used to facilitate the breakup of the product in our system and lubricants is used to improve the rate of flow of granules and also to prevent adhesion and cohesion during tablet manufacturing. The last one is solvent and vehicles where it includes the following substances and its other uses as tabulated. Those are the 15 pharmaceutical aids and necessities.